What I want to do with you now, my dear brothers and sisters, is I want to tell you a story and then relate the biggest trial you have been through with this story. So perhaps you got divorced, perhaps you lost your job, perhaps you didn't get into the degree program that you wanted to get in. Right? All of these are trials of life. Related to the following story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me to study at the Islamic University of Medina. And when we graduate, we don't have like graduation ceremonies, but rather what we do is we go to Mecca and we perform Umrah. So this is the story of a colleague of mine who graduated from the faculty of Hadith. Him and his family, his wife and his three kids, they went to perform Umrah. And on their way back to Medina, they're riding in their car and the husband, he sees a truck behind him. And this truck is going really, really fast, like 120 miles per an hour. So you can imagine like an 18 year old truck zooming down the highway. Not only is it zooming down the highway, but it's going right, it's going left, it's not staying in its lane. Now the husband in a state of confusion, he's like, should I speed up? Should I slow down? Should I pull over? What should I do? He doesn't take any action whatsoever. And as the truck comes next to him, it actually forces him off the road. Next to him was a huge ditch. So as he's driving and his car now goes off the road, the car rolls over once, it rolls over twice, and it rolls over a third time. And with each turning over of the car, someone in the car is passing away, subhanAllah. So the husband passes away, the oldest son passes away, the second son passes away, and the mother and the youngest daughter stay alive, subhanAllah. Now the youngest daughter, even though she's sitting in the back in a car seat and she has her father's seat in front of her, she's in critical condition. She's cut up, she's bruised, and there's like a lot of problems going on with her. The mother, even though she's sitting in the front and the windshield is right in front of her, she escapes this accident with barely a scratch on her. It was as if she wasn't even in an accident. But the miraculous thing and the strange thing about her though, was that she didn't have any recollection of what happened. The ambulance came, took the child and took the mother and the mother had no clue what was going on. She couldn't remember her name, couldn't remember her husband, couldn't remember anything. So they keep her in the hospital for two weeks. And after two weeks they decide, look, we can't keep her anymore, her condition isn't improving. So some of the other sisters from Canada, they came and they took her from the hospital and took her back to one of their houses. They had lunch, they had tea, they're having dessert. And as this is going on, one of the sisters decides to tell her what happened. Look. Your husband was studying, he graduated, you guys went to perform Umrah and on the way back you got into an accident where your husband passed away, your two oldest children passed away and your youngest daughter is still in the intensive care unit. Now even though she had no recollection of this story, her motherly instinct kicks in and she's like, what am I doing here? Take me to the hospital. They take her to the hospital and I want you to imagine the space between myself and that table right over there. That is the space between her and her child. And subhanAllah, as she walks in, literally that is when her child flatlines, dies very right in front of her eyes, subhanAllah, her last and, and youngest daughter. Now when you hear such a story, I want you to think about how does this relate to your problems, to your trials. It seems very trivial, doesn't it, subhanAllah. As we tell young children, don't cry over broken crayons, don't cry over spilled milk. That's what our trials are when we relate them to trials that are much, much greater than ours.